Hello, welcome to the Mediocre Takes podcast, the podcast where we talk about our mediocre takes on the shows and movies we watch. I'm Marco, and I'm here with my co-host, Mel. How are you doing, Mel? I hate my job, and I ate too much bread today. Are you still working at the same place? Yes. Uh, Today we're doing a queer movie night for the movie called Kajillionaire. This movie is about a family of con artists and the woman who joins them and how their relationship changes between the family because of the woman who joins them. And yeah, let's just get into the plot. The movie starts off with the main character, Old Dolio, and her parents starting a- to steal from the post office. After stealing from the post office, they have this watch and she dresses up as a Catholic schoolgirl to trick the people into giving her something in return for the watch. They give her a ticket for their daughter who massages people. Is that what happens? Uh, yeah, she tried to re- get a refund for the ticket. Yeah, she gets a, uh, she, she yeah. goes to the massager and she tries to get a refund for the ticket, but the massager doesn't allow her to do that, so she ends up getting a massage instead. And... What's really funny about the massage is instead of the massager actually touching her and massaging her, she puts her like hands like an inch above her so that way she doesn't actually touch her and old Dolio just lays there not being touched at all. They go back home. The landlord gets mad at them for not paying rent. Then a woman named Kelly gives them a job to go do this baby training by her caseworker. They get $20 in return. So basically they go to the baby training. Old Dolio learns this thing about like a baby crawl or something mothers are supposed to do. I don't really care. And they get $20 in return. Then they go to sleep and Old Dolio is looking at some sweepstakes they won which is a trip. Then it's the next day and the landlord tells them if they don't get the money in the next few weeks then they'll be evicted. Old Dolio and her family rob the post office again but fail this time because there's a camera. Old Dolio makes a plan to go on a plane and make it look like a bag has been stolen from her. So they can get money in return because they have traveler's insurance. Since they have traveler's insurance, they'll get money in return. They go on a flight and while on the flight back, the parents tell Melanie that they're actually here to steal. They steal the luggage and old Dolio talks to a worker who says it'll take six weeks to verify the loss. The four of them meet up and Melanie goes to the bathroom and Melanie's mom calls her. And that's the first third of the movie. Okay, so I absolutely hate old Dolio's parents. They're genuinely abusive, at least that's how I see it, and they're really annoying. I feel sorry for old Dolio because she just wants to be liked by her parents, but her parents obviously care more about Melanie than they do for her. It's really hard to watch. Speaking of hard to watch, I found the first 30 minutes of this movie extremely hard to watch. Now something you should know about me is I really hate awkward humor in movies or TV shows. I really find this movie funny. A good example of awkward humor is Happiest Season, a sapphic Christmas comedy we covered during Christmas. I found that movie to be funny because it wasn't as serious, but this movie is just a bit more serious to me, and I couldn't find it funny that much. I get that the movie is about terrible people, and just because it's about terrible people doesn't mean the screen has the same views. Like, this is a conversation we have about books a lot where... People hate certain books because the characters are unlikable, but that doesn't mean that the author has the same views about those characters or about those ideas at all. But despite that, I still dislike this movie. I just could not stand the parents. Also, what's the name with old Dolio? I just don't like the name. What? Do you like the name? Whatever. No, but it, it it's interesting. The explanation they give makes sense. Okay, whatever. Also, I didn't know that Gina Rodriguez also played Jane the Virgin, which is why she seems so familiar. I haven't watched Jane the Virgin, but I really loved Gina Rodriguez's acting in this movie. Also, it makes me sad that old Dolio says she shouldn't coddle her children to a lady, and that makes me sad. Also, the pacing in the beginning of this movie is kind of bad, and that's it. So, first things first. I love the vibe of the movie. Like, I'm not a cinematographer or anything, but I liked the filters they used and the angles of the shots. I feel like our opinions are going to be so different on this. I like how they established the family and how quickly they were able to just face off of 
like a few shots. Yeah, I like how they're able to establish the family dynamic specifically between the parents and the child by the dad saying, you know, she wouldn't understand the value because she wasn't a quote unquote gentle birth. There's a lot of talk about um birth in this movie and that's just like the first little snippet we get of that. Also, yes, that ma that massage scene was so, at first it was so funny, but it's also so sad that she obviously like wants physical touch like once again with the whole like not being a gentle birth thing but the idea of being touched is so foreign to her that she's just like <laughs> the hovering thing it was funny and i mean no slander to heterosexuals but it's absolutely disgusting that they can just have kids willy-nilly and then neglect them for funsies also you texted me about the boob scene and i'm gonna be completely honest with you i totally forgot that there was a boob scene because it was such a small scene okay honestly you texted me and i was like major side eye because it was so funny that that was the thing that got your attention and not the crusty baby that was right there because when i first watched that scene it was that little crusty baby <laughs> that i noticed it was the boob that that i saw first and then after i rewatched the movie that's why i noticed the baby and i was like kind of freaked out by it like i don't know why its skin was like that and then also okay when they were in the bar when i think it was old dolio got a toothpick or i think it was the other girl I forgot which one and then the mom was like when a man gives you something made of wood he's saying you give me wood the lack of swag that both these parents have makes me wonder how they even had a kid they're like what i think of when i think of anti-sex movie continued melanie seems annoyed by her mom Melanie comes up with the heist to have old people give them stuff for free because of how lonely they are. I think she's like a social worker and she's like keeping track of these people. She's like a um, an eye doctor assistant or something and she helps give old people glasses or something. Uh, they go to an old lady's house and steal from her. They go to a hot tub place and they buy a hot tub when they should be paying money for their landlord. They make themselves at home to a no-show guy. This guy, he wants to die, so he doesn't show up at places. When Melanie calls asking, like, you're missing your glasses, the no-show guy says, well, can you come over because of how lonely he is? And he starts crying and stuff. So they go to this guy's house. They pretend to be a family because the no-show guy wants them to be a family. Then they meet the no-show guy who's trying to die. Then they do what he says. He wants them to play the piano and to have silverware clinking. They continue to pretend to be a family. Old Dolio helps the man die. Old Dolio goes back home to cash a check. Then she runs back to the baby training place. She learns there to pay attention to children's needs. Then she gets up to a child care teacher and pretends to have a child named Old Dolio. Then a tremor happens. Then Old Dolio's father tries to have sex with Melanie, I think. Then Old Dolio comes back home and argues about the fact that her parents have never treated her like a child. So I have mixed feelings about Old Dolio's parents because, of course, there might be other circumstances for why they never showed emotional intelligence around Old Dolio. Like, of course, there are always circumstances when it comes to these things, but my god, I don't like them either way. I feel like it's still their fault, for the most part. The scene where Old Dolio tells the teacher that she has a child named Odolio makes me cringe, and I said no out loud at that moment. Like, I really hated that part. That shit made me so sad, and I found it really cringy. The weird almost sex happening is weird as fuck, and that part actually made me laugh a bit, but man, was it weird. The way the man dies... It was a weird moment in the even weirder movie. Okay, so we get the gay stare in this film and it's a staple in queer media. When Melanie looked at old Dolio, that's when I knew there was lesbianism afoot in this quirky film. Also hands, lesbians love hands. Some people watch the nail scene and they say, okay that was kind of weird lesbians watch it and we get butterflies in our tummy i feel like just the that whole scene and the cinematography the way they made it feel so like light and kind of angelic or something i feel like really encompasses just how it feels to like someone <laughs> or at least for for lesbians the idea of these old bags thinking they can seduce some young woman they convinced to steal money from lonely weirdos is beyond me but also 
somehow totally fits their characters like i talked about how they just ooze anti-sex but the fact like these are very like selfish characters the way they view themselves is so interesting to me just the way they're like all right honey go seduce her and he's like oh yeah i will you wanna join it's so crazy to me but i saw it as as it was cringy but it was also so funny because the parents were the like the butt of the joke in this situation i also want to say real quickly so basically you know how in the movie they're like yeah you can't enjoy stuff or something like that like you can't you all you have to do is skim like you can't get the things you want in life i find them to be hypocritical really because they get a hot tub they're very horrible hypocritical yeah, people <laughs> exactly. movie continued odolio's mom explains that they never called odolio hun or baby or get her presents Melanie says that she'll call her hun for the money. Oh, so basically, here's what happens. So, Old Dolio says that if you call me hun, or if you treat me like a child, uh, I'll give you the money that came from the traveler's insurance check, I think. And then Melanie says that she'll take the money and treat her like a child. Then she takes Odolio and they run away. Melanie tries to show Odolio that her parents are terrible people. They cash the money at the bank. Lani explains that she won't take any of the money until she's done everything her parents never did for her. They go grocery shopping, and Lani makes pancakes. They do the child baby crawl thing. Then an earthquake happens. After the earthquake happens, Odolio thinks she's dead and tells Melanie that the plan was to steal from her. And Odolio suddenly changes after the earthquake is over. Then Odolio's parents find Melanie and Odolio and leave gifts for Odolio. They give her birthday presents from when she's one year old to 18 years old. And the 18th birthday present is a dinner with them. Uh, and she explains she's actually 26. They go to a dinner and the parents get her a necklace. Then it's night and Melanie checks if the money is still in there. Oh, so basically that the day ends with Odolio's parents going to Melanie's house and tucking Odolio in. And then Melanie checks if the money they hid is still there, and it's still there. Then it's the next morning, and Melanie's house has been robbed, including the money, by Odolio's parents. Odolio touches Melanie. They return the gifts that Odolio's parents got them, and they kiss. And that's the end of the movie. Uh, I love the fact that Melanie and Odolio decide to take care of each other at the end of the movie. Like, it's really sweet. Uh, I have a theory that Melanie was actually happy about the fact that she got robbed because that meant old Dolio wouldn't go back to her abusive household and she was probably annoyed that her mom was sending her all that stuff anyways. I like that at the end of the movie the two women kiss and there's no judgment from anyone else in the scene. Also that Mr. Lonely song was great. I heard the original version and I liked it a lot. The entire gas station scene was such a trip. The bathroom monologue where we just fade from black into space and then the earthquake and the <laughs> the rebirth of old Dolio with her crawling on the ground and then also i know this is just a movie but logistically how did the parents take everything without making a sound first of all everything including the cups through the balcony door and i don't know if this was confirmed or not but i don't think she lived on the first floor if it wasn't the ground floor how did they do it those little inconsistencies for some reason that stuck out to me and make me um be irritated by movies also that last scene oh to be that cashier taking returns for children's toys and a necklace while two lesbians just make out right in front of your cash register it was cute and i like how they set up that little thing where odolio says that if she gets her third of the money that they love her but they can't change who they are and we see that the final price is her th exact third, like right between them, right before they kiss. I really like that. It's good writing to have this character whose parent is overly involved in their life and seemingly doing a lot of things sort of without really caring what their child has to say about it. And then having this other child with parents who also don't really care what their child is doing, but being so neglectful, like not being in their life at all. That's all I have to say about that. I didn't know that was the exact amount of a third, the total. That's yeah. really cool. It's good writing. Yeah. It's good writing, Marco. This was, this was a good movie, Marco. <laughs> I don't know. It was just, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't love it. This might be like, we get it. You hate lesbians. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm a hashtag ally.
No, I'm not. <laughs> I hate them. <laughs> I'm kidding. Did you catch that, camera one? <laughs> Anyways, you guys, that's our thoughts on Kajillionaire. If you want to send us a voice message on Anchor, there'll be a link in the description to do so. We also have an Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, which you can follow at MidTakesPod, which will also be in the description if I remember to write that. And that's everything. So goodbye.